Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll solve problem number 196. Problem number 196 also happens to be the penultimate problem dealing with the notion of time and distance. We have done several problems here, as you can see the list dealing with, as I just said, time and distance. And today, we'll do 196, the penultimate problem. The penultimate problem, something that we learn in our vocabulary, in our vocabulary lessons. The word penultimate, if you recall, on day number 11. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, you can just look it up, just type in vocabulary day 11, Watch the video, we learn this thing. Here's the list, vocabulary words, day 1 through 100. I have not quite finished the series yet, I think I'm on day number 93 right now. But on day number 11 we learned the word penultimate, which we learned simply means second to the last. So today we'll do second to the last problem, tomorrow we'll do 197, that will be the very, la very last one on the notion of time and distance, and then we'll do three, three problems more, and that will be the end of this series of algebra word problems. All together we'll have 200 word problems. Let's get going. Let's get going. Time and distance. What does it mean, time and distance? When we talk about time and distance problems, all time and distance problems deal with the very basic notion, very basic concept, very basic idea that the distance that you travel has to, de has to depend on how fast you're going and for how long. And that's all it is. That's how simple it is. For example, for example, if I tell you that I'm going 30 kilometers per hour, if I tell you that I'm going 30 kilometers per hour, And I tell you that I went for three hours. How far did I, you suppose I travel? Going at 30 kilometers per hour, if I traveled to three, three hours, it's very simple. Of course, I'm in 90 kilometers. I'm in 90 kilometers. How did you find it? You took the, dis you took the speed and you multiply it by the amount of time that I traveled. That's what it is. And that will give you the distance. This is so called, this is so called distance formula that is used throughout uh, uh, problems such as these, simple problems. Do you understand? It's very simple. The so-called formula, actually, there is nothing to it. There is no need to turn it into a freak show, the geek show. It's very simple. There is no need to go around memorizing it. This is something we do every day of our lives. So let's begin then, shall we? We're going to use D to represent the distance. We're going to use S to represent our speed. And we're going to use T to represent our time. There we go. Let's read the problem now, shall we? He says, I walk from point A to point B. We are traveling from point A to point B. We are told, I'm telling you, that had I walked half a, half a kilometer an hour slower, had I walked half a kilometer an hour slower, the trip would have taken one-fifth of the time longer than it actually did. The, the trip would have taken a fifth of the time longer than it actually did. For example, if the trip happened to take five hours, then instead of five hours, it would have taken six hours. Had it taken five hours, then had I gone, had I gone half a kilometer an hour slower, the whole trip would have taken instead of five hours, it would have taken six hours. Or if the trip took me one hour, if I if if we find out that the trip took one hour at the original speed, then had I gone half a kilometer an hour slower, then instead of one hour, it would have been one hour. And what's the fifth of an hour? Fifth of sixty. Sixty divided by five is twelve. One hour and twelve minutes. You see. Is taking fifth longer than it actually did, because I was going. Had I gone half an hour, had I gone half a kilometer an hour slower, I did not. But had I done that, the trip would have taken a fifth longer. We are further told that had I gone, had I gone a kilometer an hour faster, had I gone a kilometer an hour faster, I could have saved two hours. So if it took me five hours, I could have done the trip in three hours. Had I gone one kilometer an hour faster. This, of course, would not make any sense because it's only one hour. Do you understand? You get the idea. The question is very simple. The question is very simple, very straightforward. The question simply is, how far did I walk? How far did I travel? Now, if you like at this point, if you wish, pause the video, solve the problem yourself. Once you have the answer, you can resume the video and then compare your work 
with the work that we are about to do together. Do you understand? I'll give you five seconds to do just that for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. All right, let's begin then. So we're going to start with the first thing first. We are told that had I gone, had I, had I walked, had I gone half a kilometer an hour slower, half a kilometer an hour slower. The question is how do we represent this concept of half a kilometer an hour slower? It's right here. This is my speed. This is my original speed. S represents my original speed. So if I'm, if I want to show the notion of half a kilometer an hour slower, it's very simple. Instead of S, it's going to be S minus half. Because S represents my speed. So if s equals to 3, for example, if it turns out that s is equal to 3, that means I was going 3 kilometers an hour. s equal to 3 means I'm going 3 kilometers per hour because s represents the speed right here, kilometers per hour. And s minus half simply means that it's going to be 3 minus half, 2.5 kilometers per hour. I'm going half a kilometer an hour slower. If that were the case, if that were the case, we are told that I would have taken a fifth of the time longer. So if I took t hours originally, if I took t hours originally, I will take fifth of the time longer. I will take one fifth of the t more, and that's the distance. Distance is still the same. I'm traveling the same distance. I'm traveling the same distance. That doesn't change. So that's our first equation. That's our first equation. Let's work on this first equation on the top. Okay? We need the room, and then we'll worry about what would happen if I were to go faster. Let's work on this right here. So d equals s minus s minus half times t plus 150 same as 6 over 5t because t is same as 5 5 over 5 this is 5 over 5t 5 fifth t which is 1t plus a fifth is 650 so let's get going enough of the talk I'm going too slowly multiply it out so we're going to get s times 650 s times 650 so it's going to be s times t over times 6 over 5 let me let me let me let me not, not write that let me just keep it simple for the s times 650 minus half times this amount half times 6 t I need the room, but we'll have to raise all of this thing because we need the room, obviously. So we picked up from here, you understand? This part comes from here. Let's pick up speed here, so we're going to get... We're going to get 6 over 5, 6 over 5, st, minus 6 over... 6 over 10, we, we, can, we can simplify it, 3 fifths. 3 fifth t. Stay with me, pay attention, okay? It's very important that you stay with me. S times t. Well, S times t we know from the very beginning, we know that distance that we travel is equal to speed times the time. S times t is speed times the amount of time that we travel equals the distance. That's this guy right here. So instead of S times t, we can represent, put, we can put in t, or rather d. So 6 fifth d minus 3 fifth t. Are you still with me? Bring the 650 on the other side there, or rather bring the D to this side and bring the 350 on that side. And if you do that, bring the uh, manipulate it so that the D 650D minus D is going to be a fifth of a D. And bring the 350 on the other side, so you're going to end up with 350 D. You still with me? Multiply both sides by five. If you multiply both sides by five, I shouldn't have to show you this baby steps. This was if you multiply both sides by 5, this 5 is going to drop out. You see this? But I don't, want to, I don't want to show you the baby step. Just multiply both sides by 5. Multiply both sides by 5, the 5 drops out. And what we end up at the end is that D equals, I'm going to raise this up now, D equals 3T. This is what we achieve from the first statement. D equals 3T. What are you supposed to tell us? Tells us. What do you suppose this tells us? If, if I were to tell you that d here, d equals 3t, what does 3 represent? 3 represents the speed. 3 represents the speed. So what do we extract from this thing? After doing all of this work, what do we extract? What do we get out of it? What is our payoff? The payoff is that now we know the speed. Now you know how fast I was going. I uh, this implies that I must have been going 
I must have been going at 3 kilometers per hour. That's my speed. That was my speed. That was my original speed. We know the speed. If we can somehow figure out how long I had been walking, we can figure out the amount of distance I walked. Because that's what we want to find out. We want to find out, the question was, for how, for how much of a distance did I walk? In order, in order for you to ascertain the distance that I walked, you need to know, you need to have two pieces of information. We need to know how fast I was going, well, which we know now, I was going at 3 kilometers an hour. And for how long? You need to know, find out the amount of time. And that will be gotten from the second statement. In the second statement we are told, we are going to do the second statement on this side. In the second statement we, are to, we were told that had I gone a kilometer an hour faster, had I gone a kilometer an hour faster, which is S plus 1, what would have happened? We would have told that in that scenario, I could have saved 2 hours. Instead of taking T hours, I could have taken 2 fewer hours for the same amount of distance. Voila! This is our second sentence. This is our second statement. Let's see what we can do, shall we? I'm going to pick up speed here as I always tell you, but I never do. Here we go. ST times minus 2S. I'm not going to continue here. I'm going to write on the bottom here. 1 times T is going to be T. And then 1 times minus 2. You see S times T here. S times T here, which is same as D. This is same as D. I'm going to do it with a different color so you can see that. So this, this S times T is, is the distance right here. You can cross it out. It's gone. That tells us that uh, that uh, min that uh, minus two s plus t minus two equals zero. Okay, I just rewrote this equation: minus two s plus t minus two equals zero because that's what we have here. Let's bring. We want to find out the amount of time. Let's bring the t to. Let's keep the t to this side and bring these two side to other one. So this implies that t must equal two s minus 2. Oh, we're almost there. We know the speed. The speed is 3 kilometers per hour. S equals 3. Something has gone drastically wrong. Did I make a mistake here? ST minus 2S plus T minus 2. Minus 2. Because that is not what I have Ah, I made a mistake, you see? I made a mistake. You leave the t to this side and you bring neg negative 2s to the other side, it becomes positive 2s, and you bring this 2 to this side, it should have become positive 2. Positive 2. Let's continue. So 2 times s, s we know is 3 kilometers per hour. It's too late now, it's too late now, but had I not corrected my mistake, it's too late now. Had we not corrected, had I not corrected my mistake, you would have realized, we would have, you would have, you would, we would have found out later on that when we try to confirm our answer, when we try to verify, when we, if we, when we try to confirm our answer, we would not have, we would not have had the confirmation. At that time, we would have realized that the answer that that I had written down here was uh, was wrong. Let's see what it is. So t equals very good. This is your t. Two times three, which is six plus two. So which that tells us that we traveled eight hours. Had I done the other way around, had I done the other way around, had I, had I, had I made the mistake, it would have been done like this. In which case it would have been 2 times 3 minus 2, it would have been 4 hours. So I'm going to show you that answer of 4 hours would not give us the confirmation uh, at the end that we would look for. We would verify our answer. This is the correct answer. So let's continue. That's it, we're done. As far as the problem is concerned, as far as the question is concerned, it's done. So if you're pressed for time, if you're being time, and if you're simply looking for the answer, this is your answer. If you have the time, if you have the luxury of time, then it is always a good idea to verify your answer. So let's do that, shall we? Especially now, because we are here purely for the learning purposes. We are not in a hurry, that's why we are going at such a leisurely pace. The answer that we are claiming is, well, we haven't actually figured out the answer yet. So we are going at 3 kilometers per hour for 8 hours. So the distance that we traveled, this distance that we traveled would have to equal the distance that we travel is 3 kilometers per hour, that's our speed, times the time, which is 8 hours we're claiming. As you can see, the hours are going to cancel out, and 3 times 8, we're claiming that we have gone 24 kilometers. 
question was for how long did I, for how much of a distance did I walk and we are claiming that we walked 24 kilometers. We do not know if this answer is correct. So let's verify, shall we? Let's verify it. Let's, let's do the verification. I need the room. But before I erase everything, I'm going to give you unobstructed view for, for a while. Well, let's verify it. Where, where can we do it? Let's do it on this side. This is our verification. So we are claiming that we traveled 24 kilometers. 24 kilometers. Well, at 3 kilometers per hour, at 3 kilometers per hour, of course that would imply 8 hours. It's right here. Question is, does this piece of information fits fits with the rest of the rest of the stuff that is given to us? We were told that had we gone half a kilometer an hour slower, half a kilometer an hour slower, the time that we will take to do the same journey would have been a fifth longer. Let's see if it works. At half a kilometer an hour slower means instead of three kilometers per hour, we'll go two and a half kilometers per hour. At two and, a, two and a half kilometers per hour, this implies that if you want to go 24 kilometers, it, if you want to go to 24 kilometers, which is what we're claiming here, at two and a half kilometers per hour, again, as you can see, as you can see, the kilometer is going to drop out. The kilometers are going to drop out and the hours are going to end up on the top. 24 divided by two and a half, how much is that? I don't know how much that is. Let's make it, let's present it in a way that is more palatable, that is more uh, more, uh, more pleasing to the eyes. Let's multiply top and bottom by 4. Let's multiply top and bottom by 4 so that we don't have to deal with 2.5 at the bottom here because 2.5 times 4 is a nice round number of 10. And of course it's very easy, it's very easy to divide any, anything by 10, we just have to move the decimal. So 24 times 4, 24 times 4, how much is 24 times 4? How the hell do I know? Don't look at me. I know what 25 times 4 is. That I do know. 25 times 4 is 100. If 25 fours are 100, then 24 fours, if you were to take away one four from that set, instead of 25 fours, 25 fours are 100. Therefore, 24 fours must be 96. 96. And don't forget, we have 2.5 times 4, which is 10. This is how many hours we are, we are claiming that we took. 96 divided by 10 is 9.6 hours. 9.6 hours is 1.6 hours longer. 1.6 hours longer. The question is, does that represent, does, does that represent, does that represent a fifth longer than we actually took? Let's find out, shall we? Put, let's find out, shall we? We are saying that we took, we took 1.6 hours longer. 1.6, 1.6 as a fraction of 8 because we took 8 hours. Is this, is this a fifth? It's very simple. Again, 1.6 divided by 8, multiply top and bottom by 10. If you multiply top and bottom by 10, you will find that it is 16 over 80 and 16 is a fifth of 80 because 16 fives are 80. How do I know that 16 fives are 80? Because 16 tens are 160 or 10 sixteens if you have 10 sixteens, 10 sixteens are 160. If 10 sixteens are 160, then 5 sixteen must be 80. So it is one fifth. It is one fifth. So that, that fits in. That fits in with the problem. That fits in the problem that if we were to go at two and a half kilometers per hour on half a, half a kilometer an hour slower than our original speed, the amount of time that we'll end up taking to make the same journey is 9.6 hours which happens to be exactly fifth longer than the amount of time that we originally took. It fits in. That tells us that our answer is correct. Of course, there is a second bit of information that we could have used to verify our answer, which is what happens if we will go faster. Let's do, it that, let's do that part here. If we were to go faster, that part is actually very, that part is actually easier to verify. We are claiming that we are going 24 kilometers, 24 kilometers. At 3 kilometers per hour, of course, this implies 3 hours, or rather 8 hours. If we were to go 
how, how fast did we say? Here I go on a kilometer an hour faster. Well, if you were to go a kilometer an hour faster, you would end up going four kilometers per hour. This should have said four kilometers per hour, not four kilometers, just like here, four kilometers per hour. At three kilometers per hour, it would take eight hours. At four kilometers per hour, it would take six hours. As you can see, it is taking two hours shorter. That's exactly what the problem told us. Problem told us that if I were to go one kilometer an hour faster, I could have saved two hours. And I indeed do save two hours because instead of taking eight hours, I'm making the journey is only six hours. It did. And that was it. Bye now.